Good morning. Hello. Welcome, welcome, everybody. My name is Chrissy. Um, I do prediction readings um, pretty much on a daily basis. I'll be giving you one today for the 2nd of September. Oh, my gosh. The year is coming to a close, isn't it? Um, so there's lots to talk about today. Look, if you're new to my channel, don't forget to um, subscribe and hit the like buttons. Comment down below, guys. You know I love to hear from you. We have great little chats here. Um, but there's a lot to cover today. I am going to be giving you a prediction reading, but I first want to touch on a few things that have been popping up that we're all becoming very aware of on my channel now is the amount of people rising up. I've been saying this for quite a few months now that in September there was going to be this like rising and there has been. I can tell you now in New Zealand, people are standing up, but they've been having huge protests over in New Zealand. None of this, of course, you always have to remember is on mainstream media. Um, I've posted a few of those on my Facebook page, Chrissy Fitzgerald, Psychic Life Coach Facebook page. It's public, so you can go and check some of these videos out. I try to share as many things as I can, sort of to you guys as well. Um, Australia has been standing up. There are a large amount of protests going on globally at the moment, and Melbourne is one of them. Um, Dan Andrews, I forgot all about it. He's actually got a vote in November, um, so people are starting to stand up against um, the Premier Dan Andrews of Melbourne, which is in the state of Victoria, which is the most locked down city in the world, mind you. Two years they were locked down. <clears throat> the kids weren't even allowed to go to a park. He had them taped off, um, for example. Um, so there's people in Victoria rising up. Now, a lot of these people are a mixture of people. Um, the peop they're, they're, I've noticed that there were people marching with like um, media signs, like Channel 7, Channel 9. They were um, people opposed to all sorts of things and there was a particularly a large group of doctors who were standing up about their having to be silenced. So there's a lot of doctors that are coming out and coming forward in Australia. So these protest marches are happening. It's so good. People are rising up and of course we have crazy amount of strikes here every day their strikes. I think the train strike is still going on here in Australia. So this is just to let you guys know where we're currently at in this part of the world. I'm sure things are happening where you are. Um, Louise, I know you keep getting it and I keep getting I keep getting Germany and these surrounding regions as well. The other thing I want to sort of point out is the only protests that are being put on the news here in Australia, yes, are the nurses. Yep only putting the nurses strikes on and we know why that is don't we because that's the only thing government wants to be seen on the news because that allows them to bring out their corporate medical centers doesn't it it helps to um to highlight how necessary the new corporate medical centers will be that's probably where all this is heading god we're not stupid are we so that's what's currently going on here the nurses are allowed to be seen on mainstream media oh and there was a very big um <clears throat> job summit held here yesterday with all the Australian leaders and apparently they've got all this funding now to to help with the immigration to help the um, lack of workers and there's apparently all these holes in the um, jobs and all the industries are lacking workers and we know pretty much no one ever mentions so the mandates and how they sacked everybody um, you know elephant in the room but let's not talk about that anybody especially not on mainstream media so now there's all this funding to bring in immigrants to Australia this is probably happening globally I don't even doubt it so you know their little plans are coming out but of course hiding the protesters the real protesters from anything that's not going to help their own agenda the great reset rocket launch agenda um so that's where we're at in australia i just wanted to let you guys know fill you in people are standing up and they're striking back which is so good um but we'll just have to see where it all goes fingers um i did mention that global walkout that someone's organizing here in australia so look let's start sharing all this information let's get it out there let's get this happening we we need to get people to fight back um so I'll get, oh, I'll close my eyes. Gosh, it's just so much going on. I'll close my eyes, we'll get started. So at least we know people are starting to stand up and find their power now. And that's, I guess, the main thing I wanted to let you guys know is that this is really happening. This isn't just something that the guides are just feeding us. Like, this is happening. Okay, I'm going to close my eyes now and we'll see what comes up for the 2nd of September. Yeah, and that's what they're saying. The uprising is global. 
because people don't want to be take down to the taken down rather to the lowest of lows they don't want to have nothing and i think if anyone starts to wake up to klaus schwab and the great reset agenda it doesn't take you very long to do a little bit of digging on the wef to realize that you're not going to have anything and the corporate elites are going to gain everything so they're going to have a wonderful life and we'll all have nothing and that's the basic plan we've known it here for what three years now um that that's their goal that's pretty much their target goal yes we know all the other things like renewables and the health industry and all this you know building the moderna factories and all that is their target goal but they're the little the little target goals that build up their elite world we know that's what they're doing they're building their elite world oh my god um, hang on, let's see what else we get. Now, you've got to remember, and this is what I keep saying, these people waking up don't understand all of this. They're getting snippets of it. And like I said, there's people who work in the mining industries, people who work in the um, food and farm industries that, that have a little understanding of sort of their area, but they're not understanding all of this and when i'm saying all of this that means they can't kind of glue it all together because to these people waking up it still feels very disjointed so that's why i've always said it the waking up process takes time because it takes time for people to um piece it all together um it's not just sort of being handed to like they're not being handed, for example, they're not being handed the Reset Agenda book by Klaus Schwab. They're not being handed that and, and someone's not going, here, you have a read of this and then you'll understand what's going on. That isn't happening as we know because it's all a little bit hidden. Not completely hidden. We know there's snippets of it coming out. But if you haven't read that book, you're pretty much going to be a bit challenged by what the hell is going on because you're getting hit with this first chapter then the second chapter and then the third chapter might be renewables and then the fourth chapter is um, taking over the health systems and starting to um, take away any of the free schemes and things that go on there we know they're ripping all that out from under people and the corporate medical takeovers are going on well that's been going on with big pharma and that but this is like different it's it's all starting to unfold so unless you're given that reset agenda book it's very hard to piece all this together so we've got to remember that they're not getting all of this they're getting bits of this the reset meaning the reset but they're not understanding all of it as a whole picture see they haven't and this is the problem with a lot of these people waking up they haven't put it together that it's all under the one umbrella they they just think these things are separate but as we know here on my channel they're not separate it all comes back <laughs> to the big elites and the global leaders and the people in charge and the wea we know it's all interconnected it's like oh it's like a heavily woven blanket the guides are saying where all the all the sewing and the threads and everything is all interconnected on this one big blanket um that's what the guides are giving me it's all interconnected um hang on let's see where else we go today And see, that's what they're saying. A lot of these people can't see it yet. But they're saying that they will start to see it. Like, they're starting to see it. It's unraveling. It's like, I always say, it's like, for example, if you've got this heavily woven blanket with the agenda, for example, on it, and you pull the wool, or there's a, say there's a little thread of wool, and you pull it, suddenly it all unravels. The blanket starts to come apart, and it all goes and you can keep um <clears throat> just pulling that wool um and it it'll all start to unravel and that's what i'm getting that's what these people need to do they kind of need to pull that piece of string or wool connected to this big heavily woven blanket of the reset agenda and it'll start to unfold and they'll start to expose things and they'll start to see things so it is happening it's just that the it it the guides are saying the people waking up are just sort of seeing it in segments. That's all. They haven't pieced together that it's all coming from the one <laughs> direction. Um, as we most of us here on my channel, we know that it is. We know that they get together regularly. We know they all disappeared for a couple of weeks ago. And we know Elbo Albanese, our prime minister here in New South Wales, 
not Prime Minister, Premier, um, he disappeared for two weeks and there's been no talk where he went for his holiday, nothing, it's all very silent. So we know they've gone away, probably regrouped, and here it comes again. We know we're being hit with it. Like I said, here in Australia, we're getting immigration laws are changing so we can get um, a stronger workforce because everyone's like banished from their jobs. And the nurses, of course, that are striking here in Australia, they're only talking about how people are off sick so their number ratios are so poor. I wonder if it had anything to do with the mandates and that they sacked all the nurses and people were happy to vilify them and make them lose their jobs. We all know what happened, but no, never talked about. So now we've got immigration um, is really being ramped up here and they're passing all these bills to let immigrants in to the country, look, I don't care, it's fine. But the fact that you've got a heap of people here that have already had their jobs, 30 years experience as nurses, doctors, firemen, police officers, blah, 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 the list goes on, doesn't it? Yep, but, you know, oh, airline people, just to name a few. So this goes on and on and on. But that's okay, we'll just keep pushing those people aside. And you know why they keep pushing them aside? We all know it here, because they know too much. They're awake. These people are awake to all the BS that's been coming at them for three years. So they up and left their jobs. And of course, they don't want them back, do they, in their jobs? Because they know what's going on. So let's shove them over into the corner. It's like I said, they want to sweep everybody up with the dustpan and chuck them out in the garbage. That's basically what they're doing to people, isn't it? People with all that wealth and knowledge of experience working in maybe intensive care units, old people's home. That takes a real skill to work in an old people's home. Having been a nurse myself when I was younger, that's that takes a lot. Um, you can't just get people to walk in and, and just work in an old age home. It takes a lot of skill to deal with people with dementia. Um, it's very physically um, demanding as well, working in old age care. Plus, you're also dealing with their families because it's a very emotional time because a lot of people in old age homes, they don't often come out, do they? Um, and I think that's something where the numbers were fudged a lot with the CV virus, and I think you'd all agree there. People who usually are in an old age home, they pretty much don't come out, do they? So the numbers of people dying, and look, I know that's the harsh reality, but that's the truth often don't come out. So you're dealing with their families, dealing with those last grieving times of this, their parents' life or somebody's life, one of their loved ones. You know, so you really, it takes a specific kind of person to be able to work in aged care. You can't just get immigrants, for example, um, from a country who have got probably very little, maybe speak very little English, then you have more of a barrier. Um, these are things that, again, the government and their great reset, they don't plan and think properly. They think they've got it all sorted, but these are the things that us as normal human beings and people in touch with the real world, unlike the elites, um, understand how these processes work. So, you know, oh, personally, and I know you guys would be the same, I just see this causing more chaos. And these are the sort of things that are gonna keep happening. Oh, because then people will fight back about more things. It just goes on and on and on. It's just, it's just, it, you know, but you do have to sit back. And this is why I always talk about you guys on my channel, sitting back and watching the show now, because this is just going to go on for quite a while, well into 2023, into 2024. There's this, oh, it's just going to be like this little roller coaster wave just of idiotness from the governments. Honestly, they're just drives you crazy and now everybody's on an even playing field with the jab according to the cdc so <laughs> it was all for nothing but no one gets an apology do they of course not i think the media should come out and apologize for lying to everyone for three years wouldn't that be let's all oh wouldn't that be awesome let's all put our energy on that and manifest <laughs> that that the media has to apologise publicly to everybody. Oh, my God, I would so love that. Wouldn't you just love that to happen? Oh, my God, I just love it. I mean, how would these people waking up even react to that, though? I, think, I still think they'd be in denial, wouldn't they? Anyway, it's something to think about. We could put our energy on that. Oh, media being caught out for lying. What tyrants and monsters these people are. It's just so wicked what's been happening. Unreal. Anyway, let's see what else we get today.
Yeah, and that's what they're saying, the guides. There's so much going on hiding in the background, and this is with the rollout. They're hiding so much stuff from people. I keep saying it, we don't even know the half of this because you've got a question, and I always question, and I say to you guys, why do they only let a certain amount of information out? Like, if they didn't want us to really know about the reset, they don't really hide it all, do they? It's almost like they want us to know a certain amount for some reason. I don't know the reason. But I do get that. I think you can look up the WEF. We all know about Clash Schwab. We all know about the reset. But then I kept saying to you there's more with the reset. So I think we don't really know a lot of what's sort of percolating in the background until it kind of rises up and it's in our face, you know, like this... <clears throat> it's almost like, in a strange way, they have planned this quite well, haven't they? Because uh, there's times where they haven't, but then they seem to come together and come up with the next part of the plan, which, for example, is a perfect example, is mandating nurses, getting rid of the people who were unjabbed, forcing them to get jabbed or whatever, but then now we've got this Nord... <laughs> nurse shortage and this huge crisis um or we have in australia i'm sure this is global where you guys are as well and then the nurses rise up they strike so the media shows that and then now we've got dan andrews and perite here in australia opening medic huge medical centers i'm sure they're getting little kickbacks and we know big pharma and that would be involved in these um to save all the pressure on the hospitals and all that so you know this is what we're getting. We're getting, oh, this happens and that happens. Then they create this. So I reckon that this has kind of been planned a lot further ahead. And I think that we're, us, <laughs> who are awake, I think we're just starting to see those underneath parts of the iceberg that I always talk about. They're starting to pop up. Because if anyone, I'll actually leave that video of Dan Andrews and Perite talking about these medical clinics or these centers and they're really upbeat about it. it there's like this abnormal excitement i'll try and leave it on there like if you look at people's body language i'm very big on body language um i'll leave another body language video i've got lots of body language videos it's really interesting to observe people's human like physical behavior and and different tonalities of your voice and things like that but they're so upbeat in it it's almost sickening because you think oh obviously they're rubbing their hands together because their next part of the project's like unfolding you know what i mean so that's what sorry i hope this is all making sense to you guys but i do feel like we're starting every time something new pops up we just go oh yeah here we go next part of the reset because they did say there was more remember i said there was klaus might have written a second book well there's probably even a third and a fourth nine klaus and this is what's happening. They're, they're, um, when something sort of fails, <clears throat> like the epic rocket launch the other day that we were talking about on my channel, meaning the reset, when they relaunched it, it, it even if it fails, they've, they've got these other plans to kind of still um, <laughs> go on with the next part of it. So, oh my God, it's just so frustrating, isn't it? But that's the sort of thing that I'm seeing now, is that, oh God, what's going to be next, isn't it, you know? And all the while, like I keep saying to you guys, um, over in, be always be careful of that distraction with the monarchy and with the royals and all that because it's a huge distraction from something else. I talked about the London and maybe the rail systems and things like that over there as well yesterday changing. And, um, you know, they're very good at distraction. We know that the media and all this, and even our feeds on all our phones, Facebook, YouTube, they're very clever at that um feeding us what they only want us to sort of focus on because when something's in your face so much look an example of that perfectly was like the johnny depp amber heard um divorce oh, no defamation case rather um it was in our faces 24 hours a day you couldn't help but tap on a couple of them because it was just like what what's going on and they were really good at using their like thumbnails to grab people and <laughs> it just went for months didn't it so this is a game we're getting a lot of that megan markle and all this kind of stuff so again good distractions so they're things we have to look out for as well as just to know that they're always going to be using these big distractions um well, we know they used the Ukraine-Russia war for a little while, but that's kind of fizzled a bit into the background because people aren't as interested in that anymore because, of course, now people are struggling to make ends meet. So they've got 
bigger um, things to deal with at the moment, meaning trying to survive in this ridiculous economy. Um, hang on, let me see if there's anything else to close with today. See, I'm still getting it. <sighs> Not us. This is for the people waking up and people that want to stand against government. I said it the other day, they're still scared. They still have this fear of doing the wrong thing. And we know that's how the sheep worked in the very beginning. They all wanted to be the same. Nobody wanted to be um, vilified. Nobody wanted to be seen as the weak links that didn't get the, you know, we know how it works. Um, so people are still, a lot of people, and there's always gonna be a handful that are completely stuck in it, but a lot of people are still very fearful and scared of government. Look, let's look at Canada, for example. Like we know that a lot of people over there would be scared to stand up against Trudeau and his government because of the snap freezing of the bank accounts, the the cruel um, way they got the UN cops in and just virtually beat people to a pulp. Um, this is the sort of stuff that deters people from standing up. But like I always say, if they do it in large groups, it's much safer and, oh, and, and they can actually um, permeate sort of and, and push government back. Um, and that's why, see, strikes are something is, strikes is a way that puts the spotlight on government. And that's what the guides have been saying that whole time. Because strikes like a protest, isn't it? If you think about a strike, <clears throat> it's a little bit different because they're focusing usually on pay, um, staff ratios, you know, things like this. So it's more, it's almost like the union in often becomes like this mediator and government will deal with the union and that union will deal with the people. So we've sort of got this different breakdown in the dynamics. It's not just like <laughs> protesters, like all of us rebel, <laughs> brave art bikers and freedom fighters who stood up and then we just fought straight back against government. It, it's um, strikes, I guess what what I'm trying to say is strikes aren't, don't seem as threatening to government. And that's probably why the guides are saying it actually works because when people strike, it's still a way of putting the spotlight on government. And see, government sort of, they know that, but they try to shut it down a lot quicker. Um, um, whereas it, it's almost like they're saying that when people just stand up and protest, like we all did in the very beginning, government feels like they don't have control of it. And so it feels out of control for government. So that's why the guys are saying the strikes give oh this is interesting give the government the illusion that they've still got some control because they're dealing with the unions and the things in between so it's like government still feels like they've got a voice in that fight back that's very interesting isn't it and that's why the strikes are good because the, the strike is similar to a protest but it still puts the, the spotlight on government because then people start to all it, instead of looking at the um, strikes, people turn to the government for answers. So that's interesting, isn't it? I hope you understand what I'm saying there. Um, it gives the government the illusion that they still have a voice. <laughs> that's so interesting, isn't it? I hadn't sort of seen it that way. Um, I'll see if there's something to close with today. And people have to stand up now. They're saying, hurry, 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 hurry. The guides are saying, hurry, it's not too late. Um, and I keep saying it, we don't have to stand up. You can if you choose to, and, and that opportunity might arise. Um, we've done a lot of standing up in the past three years, probably on and off. Um, mostly the last year, very in, it was very intense. Um, but we don't have to. But these people have to now. I talked about it yesterday, the window is still open. So there is still an opportunity to fight back and squash these global dictators from taking over, which we know they're trying to do with their lovely pyramid scheme. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, my God. Hang on a sec. And the guys are saying no one's going to be worse off. It'll just be the little people. We're going to be just so... Oh, it's going to be, like, <laughs> bad. Um, it's not going to be sustainable into the future if these people don't stand up now. Um, oh. And it's saying, like, they are scared. They're showing me, like, them, you know, when someone's quivering in their boots and they're 
chewing their fingernails and their teeth are chattering. That's what it's saying about these people. But it's like they've been given no choice now. They know they've got to eliminate this like dictatorship and this garbage from their lives. And they're working out the how now. I said that a few weeks ago. They were trying to work out the how, but they're working out. It's <laughs> Maybe they're being guided somehow, but they seem to be doing a lot of strikes. Here in Australia, we are getting strike after strike after strike. And and that's on mainstream media, only the ones they want to show, of course. Um, so that's what the guides are saying. They, these people are working out how they're fighting back. Uh, because... Like I keep saying, it takes a real bravery to fight back. You have to find that real inner strength inside. We all fortunately had that in the very beginning because we could see this with great clarity. I always talk about it. Um, we had that clear vision, that sort of mountaintop view that we always talk about looking down. We could see, see, we could see uh, what was happening over this side of the mountain and we could see the elites and and all these tyrants and dictators that were what they were bringing to the people like we could see them coming towards us and we tried to warn these people because we could see it it's like oh i'm guessing i'm getting that vision of a meerkat does anyone out there love meerkats oh my god they're this is the best i've been to the zoo lately and they're meerkats it's just so funny and there's always a lookout there's always one meerkat standing on a rock or something looking out for snakes and predators and any um threats to their little meerkat family or <laughs> um kingdom or whatever you call it. i don't know what you call a meerkat <laughs> kingdom i'll call it a kingdom um <clears throat> but it's like us we're on the lookout so we stood up early we tried to warn these people because we could see what was coming but now they're gonna have to do it themselves because they didn't listen to us did they not our problem anymore so i'm gonna say goodbye from australia and have a wonderful day um i'll pop on do another video this afternoon i'll leave my video over here with some body language tips and just for some light viewing and um <clears throat> it's just yeah good to watch body language tips when you whenever you're um watching these prime ministers and that being interviewed and things like jacinda adern's a really good one to watch she laughs during all her interviews it's just so wicked isn't it um like she's saying something but her laughing and her grinning and that says something else. So body language is really interesting to observe, especially with these tyrannical dictators and leaders. Um, well, well worth looking into. It gives us a lot of the truth about what they're actually saying. Because they say um, your verbal language, isn't it? Only 20% and 80% is usually what you're actually doing with your body. Oh, God. Ooh. Anyway, let's go check some of them out. Um, I'll say goodbye from Australia. Take care. Have a great day, everybody. And I'll talk to you soon. Bye, everyone. Bye.